What is up you guys, this is LEGO Superheroes Today, and man, am I excited for today's review. We're going to be taking a look at set 76105, the Hulkbuster Ultron Edition. This set has 1,363 pieces and is for ages 14 and up in the United States. The set retails for $120, and it's part of Marvel Studios' first 10 years collection of merchandise. So without further ado, let's start taking a look at this amazing set. So now let's take a look at the Hulkbuster. Here's a brick separator and you can see for size comparison that this thing is massive. It's a really great looking model. There's lots of detail. There's some stickers on it, which I know that some people aren't crazy about stickers, but the model itself just looks great. There's so many little intricate details like on the sides of the legs here, on the arms, that are all brick built and it looks great. On the back of the model, on the back of the kneecaps here, the back of the kneecaps, I guess that's a thing. Uh, there are these little fan pieces that kind of lift up, and there's an arc reactor on there that's the same for both legs. There are these little plank pieces that actually move a little bit, as you can see. They're on ball and joint points there that kind of stabilize the model in the back, so that's neat. We have all kinds of arc reactors here, which are accurate to the film. I love how smooth the backs of the arms are, too. Really great, really great. I love these little latch pieces, too, the gold pieces. There's just so much great detail and gold trim on this that I absolutely love. So as far as the Hulkbuster goes, one of the main components is the left arm here. Um, as you can see, it's got these kind of like grabby little fingers there that are cool. Um, from the film, this is the arm that Hulkbuster uses to grab Hulk's fist and hold him in there. So it's kind of cool that uh, we have these interchangeable arms from Veronica, just like the movie. If you take a look, there's a little rubber band there that came with the set that you can push the arm out like this. So it's kind of got like a neat little grabbing, extending feature there. And as you'll remember in the movie, the arms are interchangeable. Of course, this is the second arm that Hulkbuster gets. So if you come down here to where the joint is and you give it a slight little pull, there's a little ball joint there that connects into here. And then there's a regular arm, as you can see here, that has the fingers. They're all on little pins there so the fingers can move and you can pose them however you want and then there's a ball joint here that also moves and you can put that right into here and it clips in so now you have a regular arm that goes with the other regular arm so you have a matching Hulkbuster on both sides definitely a cool feature so now let's hop down to the legs if I'm being honest this is what took me by surprise the most and it wasn't necessarily a good surprise the legs are very sturdy. The build is strong. Everything's great there. There's tons of great detail in the kneecaps here, on the sides. So it's not the aesthetic look. It's actually the functionality that does it for me. If you look here, there's two pins that go into the hips there. You can see it from the back here. Lift his arm up so you can see down through there. There's two pins there, so you can only move the legs up and out. They don't move forward. And I think that that limits some of the posing ability of this figure. Now, I see where that strife comes in. It would have been hard to do, but it limits the posing, and that's something that I just thought this was going to be a giant action figure, and not being able to pose it in any which way is definitely concerning to me. So that's kind of annoying. Um... But, you know, the knees don't even bend. The knees are straight. Uh, there's a little wiggle there, but they don't bend. And the feet move. The feet are on ball joints. And there's the bottom. There's two little tires under there that do a little bit for the gripping. The rubber kind of mats it down. But it's annoying to me that the feet move as much as they do, but the knees and the hips, or the legs rather, don't. So, I don't know. The legs are definitely a disappointment for me. Now, coming over to the torso, there's a lot to talk about here. There's some great details. We have stickers here. We have a printed helmet, which is really cool. It's a dome piece there. We'll get to that in a second. There's a sticker here and just all of these little pins and connectors and everything. It just makes this set look awesome. So if we spin him on his hips here, there's a hidden button that if we push in this bar right there, I'll do that now. There's actually a light that shines. You can kind of see the reflection against the wall and through him, but I'll turn him around so that you can see here. And when I push the button, you can see that that arc reactor turns on. So I know a lot of people are really excited about the light brick on this set. It's definitely a cool thing. Um, in some regards, I wish it could stay on all the time without pushing it, but on the other hand, the battery would die really quick. So it's definitely a cool little feature. Um, something else to talk about is the helmet here. The helmet 
if we look, actually pins down right here. So if I open this up, you can see that Iron Man sits inside just like that. You can stand him up or you can sit him down. Either way, he fits in there pretty well with the helmet up. And as you can see, there's two loose studs right there on like slope bricks that connect to this bar right here. So as we push the bar down, which is hinged on these Technic bricks back here, those little arms, if we push this down, that bar will lock into place, and then Iron Man's uh, Hulkbuster helmet covers the whole thing. So you can see here that that bar connects to these pins here on the slope, and uh, yeah, that's how that works. So let's take a look at the accessories and the minifigure that come with this set. Here is a little uh, replica model of Veronica, which as you'll recall from the film is the space orbiting telescope thing that actually uh, deploys the extra arm in pieces for Hulkbuster. So it's cool to have that. It's kind of a little memento. The minifigure, which I'm sure a lot of you are interested in, is Iron Man's Mark 43. Uh, as you can see here, he comes with a little base that says Mark 43. And on the torso here, it's kind of like pulled apart, I guess, because in the movie when Iron Man goes into the suit, the Hulkbuster suit, that is, it connects to him. So I guess that that's a little tribute to that. Um, Underneath, there's just a clear head. No Tony Stark, so that was kind of interesting and weird. Um, but there's the back. Again, it's kind of opened up a little bit for Hulkbuster to tune in, if you will. There's a little remote control race cars thing here. I don't really know what this is supposed to be, but I guess it's kind of cool. It's almost like they had some spare pieces lying around and just wanted to throw something in. And then there is a fire hydrant uh, thing here, like a fire extinguisher, with a sticker that goes on the middle, but... It's weird because it's to scale with Hulkbuster, but not to scale with the minifigure. So I don't really understand what was going on here, and I thought that that was a little bit weird. Now here's the base that Hulkbuster goes on. Uh, there's a little platform that you can put Iron Man on to get him, you know, kind of like around Hulkbuster, I guess. Um, there's a little name placard here that has all of the details for Hulkbuster, which is cool. And it folds down flat if you like that look better, or if you want it to be straight up so that you can display it on a shelf or something, you can do that. But laying it down flat, you can see there's lots of flat bricks here. And I'll move Hulkbuster just so you can see that there's three, like, road plates. One, two, three. And then two by four flat plates that run all the way down the length there. So that's neat. Uh, just spin it around. There's some little stickers here. There's a Hulkbuster sticker and a Veronica sticker, kind of like computer chip pieces. There's the back. There's little empty pegs here, too, so that you can pull these arms out. And you see there's a Technic pin, so you can move them wherever you please. So that's cool. That's the same on both sides. And then speaking of those arms, if you take the extra arm piece that will inevitably be left behind by taking, you know, one of the arms off, they actually can, like, clip on here. So that's neat. Um, I guess this one kind of clips on like that with the little thing. Um, you could do it on the rubber band and you'll drop it like I did, or you can clip it by the hand there. So there's lots of different ways you can do that, but again, it's just a cool little side feature. So we're gonna bring this review to a close. It's a great addition to your Marvel Cinematic Universe Lego collection, but for $120, I'm a little disappointed with the leg features. There's not a lot of play features with it. And at the end of the day, this is a display set. There are no other Marvel sets that are to this scale, so it's kind of hard to play with with your other Marvel superheroes sets. And I think that this is one for diehard Marvel collectors, but particularly adults. It's priced for adults, and it's built as a display piece, not necessarily a play piece. So. I like this set, I do recommend getting it if you're a diehard Marvel fan, but if you're somebody who enjoys playing with LEGO, this might not be the set for you. Think about what you would do with it. If you're a collector that likes to display, this set's for you. If you're a collector that likes to play, you might have to make that call on your own. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. If you liked what you saw and you liked what you heard, feel free to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for daily LEGO photos from your favorite LEGO themes. This has been an official transmission from LEGO Superheroes Today. And as always, build on.